We're talking today with David Goldsboro of Brownstown, Illinois. Uh, we're doing this interview session a little bit differently from normal, though, because uh, Mr. Goldsboro served on the same LST in World War II as Wyoming resident Sid Langer. Uh, in the Grand Valley State University <coughs> Veterans History Project archive, we have a full interview with Mr. Langer, uh, but since the two men were in the same gun crew on the same ship at the Battle of Okinawa, we thought it might be best to have Sid sit in uh, with Mr. Goldsboro's interview. And the interviewer is James Smither of the Grand Valley State University Veterans History Project. Okay, now, uh, we begin these interviews at the beginning. So uh, <laughs> to begin with, uh, where and when were you born? I didn't give you all that before. It's not on tape. This is for the audience. So tell the audience where you were born. Well, I was born in Fayette County, Illinois. Okay. In what year? 1926. All right. Uh, and then did you grow up there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and what, what was your family doing for a living when you were a kid? Oh, there's farmers. Okay. So you're growing up during the Depression. Yeah. Uh, now, did your family own their farm, or did they lease it? Or? Well, we owned some and leased some. Okay. And what kinds of things were you growing? Oh, some wheat and some livestock. Okay. All right. Uh, and then uh, did you, uh, let's see, I guess, what do you remember um, about Pearl Harbor, or how did you learn about Pearl Harbor? Well, I think I was in school when I heard that they had bombed Pearl Harbor. Okay. So that you, was before I went into the Navy, of right. course. Because you, you were still only, you know, 15 at that point. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, so you went to school, that'd be on a Monday. Now, Pearl Harbor happened on a Sunday, but did you not listen to the radio or have a radio out on the farm? Or? Well, we didn't have a radio on, I know. Okay. <laughs> so you, you get to school that day and everybody's talking now you're at war. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, now, did you stay in high school until you graduated, or did you leave early? No, I joined the Navy in my senior year. Okay. Uh, and so what year did you join the Navy then? 43. All right. Uh, now, at that point, you're only 17. Right. So how did, what was the process for enlisting? Well, I had to have uh, my parents sign it. Okay. My, otherwise, they wouldn't take me. <laughs> okay. Now, what did your parents think of that? Did they what? want? Did, did your parents want you to go in, or did they want you to wait? Well, they didn't object when I wanted to go. Okay. Now, did you have any older brothers? Yeah. And were they already in? Well, yeah, see, one of them, one of them was already in, one wasn't. Okay. So. Now, because you were working on a farm, did you have an option to just stay on the farm and... Well, I know some of them did, but uh, since I was just joining up, volunteer, why? Okay. There's no point in that. All right. <laughs> now, uh, why did you choose the Navy? Well, I said I'd rather drown than be taken prisoner. Okay. I'm not too lazy to carry a pack on my back. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now, where do they send you for training? Where do you go first? Great Lakes, okay. Illinois. All right. That's up north of Chicago there right. on Lake Michigan. Okay. Uh, and when did you arrive there? Was it still 1943 when you got there? Yeah. Okay. Right. Probably in November, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what was boot camp like at that time? What were they having you do? Well, they tried to get you in shape. They'd give you calisthenics and run and jump and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, and then did they teach you things that are more specific to the Navy? Well, they asked me what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I said, a gunner's mate. Okay, I think you'd make a signalman, they said. Okay. So that's what I was. <laughs> All right. Uh, but now, at, in the boot camp, did they teach you, uh, was there a lot of discipline, follow orders, that kind of thing? Oh, yeah, you followed orders. Okay. Uh, there was three ways, my way, your way, and our way, mm -hmm. <laughs> Navy way. Right. Okay. Now, um, was it easy for you to make that adjustment to life in the Navy? Yeah. Okay. So you were used to following I just orders? Done what I 
told to do. Okay. Now, did some of the other guys have trouble? Not that I know of. Okay. All right. And how did the drill instructors treat you? The what? The drill, the instructors, how did they behave? They were good. Okay. So they didn't, um, well, what happened if, if somebody got something wrong, if they didn't do it right? I don't really know what they do to them. Not much of anything, maybe. Okay. So you don't remember a lot of hazing or other things like no, that? No, we never had that. Okay. All right. Now, did they teach you, um, sometimes you had to go in, into, you know, like, did they teach you firefighting or anything like that? No, we had to go through, uh, where they had gas and put your mask on and take it off and go through. <laughs> Stuff like that. Okay, so you had to get a gas mask. So we had an room. idea what it was. Okay, all right. And about how long did you spend at Great Lakes? Uh, maybe two months, sixty okay. days, or. Something. All right. So it's probably going to be uh, early 1944 by the time you're done with that training. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and after you complete the basic training, what do you do next? Well, they sent me to signal school. Okay. And where was signal school? University of Chicago. All right. <laughs> uh, and what were they teaching you there? What were, what were the classes in? To be a signalman. Okay. They didn't know the Morse code and the semaphore and the, all the flags and stuff. That's what a signalman done. Okay. Uh, and how fast did you have to go in Morse code? How many words a minute? Gee, I don't know whether there was a time on it or not. Okay. But you learned it well enough that but you qualified. Well, to graduate, you had to know it all. Right. Okay. Uh, now, what were the days like when you're going to, to school there? How many hours a day would you be in class? Oh, it wasn't very long. didn't seem like. Maybe three, four hours. Okay. And what did you do the rest of the time? I didn't do nothing. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, while you're in, in Chicago, w would you take a bus or the L and go downtown, or did you just stay by the campus? Oh, I don't think I need to go into that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I tell everyone if there are questions they don't need to, they don't want to answer, they don't answer them. Okay. Uh, I can't ask. Now, did they have uh, an entertainment and things for servicemen in, in the city? Were there places you could go, USO and things like that? Oh, at times they'd show a movie or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So about how long did you spend in signal school? Is it two months or longer than that? Maybe three months. Okay. Probably. All right. And then once you complete the signal school, uh, now where do they send you? Went to Bradford, Virginia for amphibious training. Okay. Uh, and what happened there? Well, you done your amphibious training. Okay. But most people are not going to know what that is. <laughs> so did, did okay, you... Okay, you'd have to swim out so far and swim back. Okay. And uh, just do calisthenics and... <clears throat> get in shape. Okay. Now, what kind, were you working with landing craft? I mean, did you use landing craft? Or, I mean, like, so would you get in, in a Higgins boat and come in or uh, anything like that? I didn't have any idea what, what ship I'd be going on or what kind even. Okay. It was just for amphibious. Okay. So they were just getting you used to being in the water? Yeah. Okay. All right. So did you do any signalman work at that point, or were you just... Well, not in? at that point, no. Okay. All right. And about how long do you think you spent in Virginia? Oh, maybe two or three months. Or okay. Uh, <coughs> now, did you spend all of your time on the base, or could yeah. you go on? Okay. No, just on the base. All right. Uh, now, is, is that base near Norfolk? Was it that area? Yeah, it wasn't too far from Norfolk. 
Okay. Now, Sid, you also trained there, is that right? Uh, Did you train in Bradford, Virginia? Yes. Okay. And I think in your story, you talked about going in, into Norfolk and so forth. Um, and so you did some of that, okay, but you didn't. Okay, all right. Um, now then, once, let's see, once you finished the amphibious training, uh, what comes next? Well, uh, come back to uh, Navy Pier and get assigned to the LST. Okay, all right. And then which LST were you assigned to? 651. 651, okay. And where was the LST at that time? At Seneca, Illinois, is where it was built. Okay. And so that's on, is that on the Des Plaines River or the Illinois River? Or? Well, we went down the Illinois River into the Mississippi and then down to New Orleans. Okay. So you, you joined the ship, though, at its starting point. Right. Okay. Uh, now, Sid, you joined the ship at the same time, is that I right? joined the ship at the same time. Okay. <coughs> well, all went from Great Lakes to the ship on a truck. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I, now how long did you spend, uh, you think, in, in Seneca before you left? Was it just a few days or? You remember how long you were in Seneca, Illinois? In Seneca, Illinois? Uh, just a few hours. Oh, okay. So yeah, you, We was transferred by truck, brought over to Seneca, Illinois, went in, had to find our bunks and all that. and. Uh, Okay. Then we took off. All right. Uh, so you're now you're, you're you're sailing on the Illinois and on the Mississippi. Uh, what do you remember about sailing down the river? Well, you just had to watch for sandbars, <laughs> so you didn't get stuck on it and go through the locks and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess you you were, you were sort of passing by your home in the process, and they well, were a ways away from the river. But. Yeah, well, well, about seventy miles or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, did you uh, w would you stop at various places along the way, or did you just stay in the river the whole time? We stayed in the river all the time. Okay, but would you refuel sometimes? I don't think we had to to get down there. Okay. I don't remember yeah. if we did. I said, do you remember if the LST stopped any place on the Mississippi? No, I didn't. Okay. No. It went straight straight on through. Uh, but all of overnight we stopped. Okay. Every every night. Okay. Yeah, so we couldn't run at night. Okay. Because you couldn't see the sandbars or yeah. what, whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And about how long do you think it took to get down to the Gulf? Seven days. I think it was about seven days. I uh, mean, that's about right. Okay. All right. And then do you just go straight out into the Caribbean at that point, or did you load up with anything first? Well, we had to do a lot of building on the LST because going down the river, you couldn't have the mass and stuff. Okay. So did you stop at, at New Orleans or someplace to get ready to go to sea? Well, they had to get the ship ready for sea. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and now, were you going to carry any cargo with you? Did you load up the inside of the LST, or was it empty? Oh, pardon me, I'm okay. so did they load up the LST uh, in the United States? Did they put cargo and supplies on? Uh, just no, we did not take on any cargo. <clears throat> uh, we uh, went down down the LST, and. Uh, they had, uh, well, I talked to the skipper when he got down there, and he says, uh, I said, how long is the ship going to be here? He said, probably be eight to ten days. I said, well, when I was gone, my wife had a child, and they're going to baptize it this week, Sunday. Is it possible for me to get a three-day pass so I can go hitchhike over there and get a ship? plane and, L, and uh, then get a plane and then I hitchhiked the rest of the way to Grand Rapids. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they let you out for that. Now, did you get back to the ship in time? Did I get back to the ship in time? 
I got back onto the ship in time, but when I talked to him and asked him for something to, uh, uh, if I uh, could go and everything, he said, you can go, but when you get back, you don't talk to anybody but me, okay. but him. <laughs> you don't talk to anybody but him. Nobody. And he said, as soon as you get back, you just tell him you want to see the skipper. That's it. Okay. So I, when I got back, I said, Linger reporting for duty. He says, okay. I said, I have to see the skipper. Or, uh, and uh, he said, why? I said, I can't tell you. I got to see the skipper. So go ask him. And so he went down there and said, yeah, I want to see him. So I, he took me in there and uh, he says, uh, I got uh, how long do you expect to stay in the Navy afterwards when you're discharged? I said, I want to go home as quick as I can get home. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay. Uh, have you thought about signing up again? I said, no. I said, I don't want no part of it. I said, I got three kids home. I said, I'm ready to go home. And uh, okay. But he says, I got a job for you. He said, we have to have say, uh, secret charts. He says, and we have to pick them up at certain spots. He says, and because I think I can trust you, uh, you will be picking those up when I, I'll call you. You go pick them up. The secret charts, top secret. So uh, we did that, and I'd bring it back to him. And then he wouldn't talk for, but I was on the big charts too. This is, this is a small one. And so on. When I uh, got those, he says, uh, can you put that on the what we have to do on the top secret chart, uh, on, on the big chart? He says, nobody knows what you're working on because you've been working on charts all the time. Mm -hmm. So, All right. That, now, when did the two of you meet each other? Did you meet in Illinois? Uh, or back when we got on, probably when we got to Florida, uh, we had a uh, practice uh, landing and uh, everything was was uh, different uh, vehicles and some of them were ducks and so forth. And then when we were down there, we were practicing landing because we our ship would land and we got down uh, uh, down there. And uh, we, we can start coming in, and about a thousand feet out, the skipper always says, uh, uh, "Drop stern anchor." Okay, Gold and I were on the same <laughs> the same ship at that time, so he forgot to say "drop stern drop stern anchor." So we went up on the beach so far that we knocked down about six coconut trees <laughs> with a ship. We're the only ship in the Navy that's ever knocked down coconut trees. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Uh, now, I think in, in your interview, we covered it. I, it looks like you you went basically to New Orleans and then from there to Panama. So you were talking about being in Florida. Was that when you were doing amphibious training? Yeah. Okay. So you I did was the sickest guy in a ship. He was. I was the sickest guy in a ship. And... Uh, I couldn't walk, I couldn't, I couldn't do much. I was just vomiting all the time. So a couple of days later, I was over it, and I never got sick again. Okay. Now, uh, what was your job on the ship? What was your main job? Signalman. Okay. And so where, what, where, where would you be stationed when you were on duty? The top side, where the lights, where your signal lights are. Okay. And the flags, run the flag hoist. All right. And so, and did they regularly use, so you've got like, like those, those the blinkers that you see in the old movies. Blinkers, yeah. Yeah. You've got those as well as the signal flags. Uh, would you also take a turn um, with the radio, the Morse code, uh, or did you just work signal flags? And I just worked signal flags. I didn't get on a radio or nothing. Okay. 
All right. Now, another thing about uh, the, the ships is they also, everyone also <coughs> has a general quarters assignment. So if there's a battle going on or Jeep something. Guru, yeah. Yeah. And so what was your assignment? Um, uh, the same as Sid Linger's. We're down on a gun. Okay. What, yeah. kind of, what kind of gun? 20 millimeter. Uh, it was one of the 20 millimeters with a, uh, a shake all over, you know. Yeah. So we were on that. Okay. So you're basically together on the same gun crew. We we're on the same one. Yeah, okay. we we're on the same one. All right. Now. In GQ, you mm -hmm. went to the same station. Right. Okay. So everybody knows where to go if there's an emergency and you all oh, have yeah. your job. Okay. All right. So in your story here, we've gotten you to the point where uh, you're, now you're, you've gotten ready to go. You leave New Orleans. You head out into the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and now you're going to sail to Panama and then up, what, to San Diego and then across the ocean. Now, when you were sailing in, in the Gulf of Mexico, did the ship sail by itself or did you have a convoy? We were in a small convoy. Okay. All right. Uh, now, at that point, uh, there weren't too many U-boats around, but it was still a possibility. Now, when you got, do you remember going through the Panama Canal? Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 What was that like? Because you were a signalman, so you could see things. Well, I didn't have to do any signalman really mm -hmm. going through the canal. There right. no other ships out around there. Mm -hmm. But did you get to be up at your post so you could watch? Well, I'd stand my watch up there anyway. Okay. All right. Now, did they let anybody go ashore in Panama, or did you just stay on the ship? I don't know. We had about three, four day pass. Yeah. Okay. In Panama. Yes. Right, uh, and, uh, and, so, uh, and so did everybody get to go ashore, or just some of you? No, it was uh, someone has to stay on the ship mm -hmm. all the time. So if if uh, my job was four hours, when I, and if I was gone, it's five hours. I would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I had to be back in four hours to stand my watch. Okay, so you could get. You give. Well, the port side liberty one day and the starboard side liberty the next day. Okay. But four hours, you couldn't get in too much trouble. The what? You couldn't get in too much trouble in four hours. Probably. No. Well, no. Okay. Well, I, uh, I had my camera with me at the time. Mm -hmm. So I took pictures along the Panama Canal with a horse and a wagon mm -hmm. and uh, stayed away from all those crappy stuff that's around there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there were some interesting ways to get in trouble there, but... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you, now, now you head out in the Pacific, and when you go to the Pacific and you go up to California, were you still with your convoy? Uh, we had one fellow when we were going down uh, past California, and one of them had a... Uh, uh, Appendicitis, wasn't it? Appendicitis, yeah. So we had to stop in San Diego to drop him off and then load up on some stuff at the uh, uh, suburb, uh, at the uh, su sub station. Okay. And they had better stage, got better food than we did all the way through. <laughs> so we loaded up with food and then we took off. I think we had three of us, didn't we? When we took off from California, three of them. Seems like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think we had three of us that took off. Yeah. All right. Uh, and then, so now you're heading out. Uh, now, did you ever get seasick? No. Okay. Don't and, ask me. Yeah, you, you, you yeah, told did. us you, you <laughs> did. Yeah. Okay. So, so how did you avoid getting seasick? I don't know. I just didn't get it. Just lucky. <laughs> All right. Now, what was the weather like when you were crossing the Pacific? We had good weather all the time. Seemed like it, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, I was in the quartermaster, so I had to go back and write the log. And so I had to go back and re get a, re uh, a reading off the uh, pass rail log and then put the, come down with that. Mm -hmm. And the sky and what's, how much wind. And we had to mark that down every 15 minutes. All right. Uh, now, let's see, did you stop in Hawaii? Did you go to Pearl Harbor? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And did they let you off the ship there? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we got, they give us a little tour around it. We rode on a, 
Well, you know what a flatbed wagon is? They haul hay on? Mm -hmm. Okay, they took us around. Uh, I'm going to off the ship, but see what the Japs had done to Okay. So you got an early tour of Pearl I Harbor. I was not on that one. Okay. All right. Yeah. So how much, um, was there still wreckage that you could see? And, or had they cleaned things up pretty well? Well, there's a lot of wreckage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everything was, we were parked along the side of Utah, if I'm right? And we had to crawl over Utah. It was about a slant like that. Mm -hmm. So we had to crawl up on there and then cross all. And then go, and then we could go out. So that was about the closest ship they could bring us in. Okay. Now, when you left Hawaii, where where did you go after Hawaii? <clears throat> well, we had a lot of uh, materials that we had to bring to different ships, uh, different places. There's a place called Johnson Island. You know, you heard of it? I have heard of Johnston. Yes. That's a little further out. It's not quite in the chain of uh, Hawaii. Mm-hmm. So we got down there, and we had to unload their food and everything there and there. And we got done, this one guy says, have you got any eggs? Yep, we do. Well, what do you want for them? I don't know, what do you give us? He said, we'll give you a Jeep for a case of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> so he says, have you got any more? Yeah, we got another case. What do you give us this time? We'll give you another Jeep. <laughs> and we didn't have much soda, so they took those and they was racing around us in a tank deck. <laughs> okay, so you got the so you could actually drive the jeep around inside the LST. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, you're not carrying a lot of cargo. No. There was room in there no, in the tank deck. St stuff that we had to bring down because every time we stopped at another Julithi or this one, that one, that one, we had to load up because we had to pick up. 500 Marines along the way in all these different islands with all the material, with all their stuff, and we got to put them on our ship. So we had to do it piece by piece by piece, maybe five different islands. Okay. And then we had to, uh, uh, let's see, we had five different islands on that, uh, maybe five or six or seven, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, right. yeah, then we took off. And, uh, and then we had to cross the equator. Yeah. Right. Now, in your interview, you, you gave us a pretty good account of, of, of the King Neptune ceremony. Yeah. Now, did you, what, did you have to go through the well, King Neptune? We were there at the same time. We were okay. on the same ship. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so can you describe what happens at a King Neptune ceremony? Not if he done described it, that's all you well, need. But if someone is watching this program and is not going back to find his interview in our archive, they <laughs> well, won't know. So, uh, so what, 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 was it, what did they do? Well, we had us climb a ladder in the back. Yeah. Okay. And then we got off that ladder, and then they had a long, 50 feet long canvas in a tent shape. And we had to go underneath that. And while we're going underneath it, they took two by fours and everything and beat the daylights out of you. And when you got on the other side, they put the hose on you again and you were socking wet. Now you had to go around the side and you had to go see King Neptune. Uh, kiss the deck. <laughs> Boom. Ah! I thought I lost all my eyes and my teeth and my chin. I thought I lost everything. Yeah. That was so. You that, kissed the deck? That electricity. So they, oh. I was socking wet. And they put sock, put electricity on you, and you're, you're, I sort of lost my eyes. I thought I lost everything. Okay. It was rough. Yeah. So, but the skipper had to go through, too. And okay. he started crying. <laughs> so the, so but, this is the first time you could cross the equator? Was that, or well, the date Yeah, this is for the, the first time uh, you cross the equator, mm -hmm. then you had to go through initiation. Right. Yeah. And you're a shellback. You're a shellback. So what are you before you're a shellback? Polywog. Polywog to a shellback, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, different people have different stories, but actually, yeah. it, it, but yours was good. Okay, so you go through all of that. Uh, now, I got pictures of that on that tape. Okay, and we've got you, um, I guess, so basically you went, um, you went to kind of Guadalcanal, Tulagi, the Solomon Islands, yep. you went to Ulithi, uh, which I think is in the Caroline Islands, 
Yep. Uh, and then was Ulithi where um, you got ready to go to Okinawa? Was that the? Yep. Okay. So now we're in early 1945 at this point. I was early 44. Yeah, 45. 45, yeah. Jeff, I was on Easter Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, talk a little bit. Now, let's see. As you get ready now to go for the invasion of Okinawa, which I think starts yeah. on April 1st, um, how much of the fleet could you see? Were there a lot of ships around then? Yeah. And what kinds of ships could you see? Or what? Well, there was all kinds, LSDs and, and battleships, of course. They were hammering the coast. Okay. Uh, Small ships, big ships, yeah. everything. Everything, so, yeah. Everything, yeah. Okay, yeah. so when you went from Ulithi to Okinawa, did you go in one big convoy, or were there a lot of different groups of ships? We went in a convoy. Okay. All right. And as you approached Okinawa, now, did the... At what point did the Japanese show up, or? Well, uh, not, the, not the first day. We went in there, uh, and uh, these, L, these battleships were bombing and everything. And then the uh, ships, off, the planes off the ships came in, and they bombed the, the, where we were going in. So that was all bombed out. Okay. So, uh, and then? Um, and so now, at the time when you're, the landing is starting, were you up at your station as a signalman? Yeah. Okay. So there was somebody else on your gun at that point? Or, were you, or, yeah, or we was there no one on the gun? GQ at that okay. time. Okay. Because he was quartermaster and he had to. Okay. So, you, so when the invasion starts, you're both doing your regular jobs because there's no threat from the Japanese at that time. Now, were well, there Japanese on shore shooting at you? or? They, they, we heard, uh, when we were there, we were so busy, we didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, what's this fellow's name? Uh, when I got home, then I listened to this uh, fella, and he was saying, in the first two days of Okinawa, they had sunk, the uh, kamikazes and everything, had sunk uh, 30 ships, and they had uh, 300 of them that were damaged. And about 1,500 were killed, two days. We were there for the first 24. Mm -hmm. All right. So at what point then um, do the kamikazes start to show up? Do they show up in the second day, uh, or third day? Or? They started showing up that first day already. Oh, we had them, they were coming in out of the low. And uh, well, Cold, Goldie and I was, worked as one. We, we didn't work like most of them did. What we did when that plane started coming across, uh, goalies already got it loaded, okay? Uh, and when the first time we get there, I pull the trigger. But after, ever after that, he is the one that uh, kills the people because uh, I, I'm right there and I got my hands on a trigger all the time. And then when he picks up uh, a, a, cassette, uh, a magazine, magazine and he slows it, throws it on there, that's when the bullets start flying. Not with my hand, because that's been on there. But he is, as soon as his fly on there, then his shell, I, in the meantime, I'm looking for a target. And we did that on all the way through. Okay. So, he was the one that really killed the people who, who really hit it. I had to find it. So, so you're you're basically you're you're aiming, but um, and you. I'm just loading it. Okay. Now he would load it. As soon as that loader was on there, the gun starts shooting. Okay. Because the trigger was pulled already. Okay, yeah, so the, the shells start going. Through. Now, did you have a magazine, like a metal box full yeah, of? Well, about a 60 yeah. pound box. Okay, all right. And then about how, how heavy were the individual shells, do you think? I don't know. Okay. I would guess you, around 60 pounds, well, maybe a little maybe, more. Well, that, that would be the magazine. Yeah, probably. that's a magazine. Yeah, and then how many rounds were in the magazine? 60. Okay. Wasn't it? 
I mean, we had some it was some was tracers, you know. Right. So you, okay. I don't know how many. Mm-hmm. All right. That's uh, too long ago. We didn't pay attention to that at all. <laughs> okay. And then you talked. Uh, you would find targets. How would you find targets? What? How would you find the targets? How would I find it? Uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, the con would come down. Uh, the uh, starboard side commenced firing. Okay. Boom. You knew there was something there. So we look. I had looked through my uh, things. Uh, so I had to find a target and stick right with it. Whether it took a minute or five minutes or whatever, I stuck with that target. No way to get off from it. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime, as soon as he threw it on there, psh, we blew everything out. Okay. So uh, we were one, not two. Okay, so you could just kind of read each other, yeah. and you knew when to put things in and so forth. And I guess in your original interview, you talked a little bit about aiming at the aircraft, and you mentioned that uh, you basically just you use the tracers as a guide. Yeah, we had we had tra- every third sh- uh, shell was a tracer. Yep. And so you could track a plane that was coming toward you yeah, and if it's coming, get it in the line. Yeah. If it's coming toward us, we got to shoot just a. You got, your target's got to be just a little bit high. We, well, you got to, if you can get, hit, get it to hit the windshield, if he's coming at you, you could, that will blow up and that'll, he'll be dead. But if we don't, we're dead. Okay. So that's why we have to work right together. All right. So if you hit some other part of the plane, it might still fly into the ship. Yeah, and if it's a if it's an aluminum shot plane, and uh, and it didn't hit anything solid, that would go right straight through and out the other side. Mm-hmm. That aluminum, it was not heavy enough to blow up. So. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so. How long, when the attacks came, how long would they last? How long would you have to stay on your gun? Day and night. <laughs> so we got an all clear. I don't know how long that was. Okay, uh, but, but it could go on for several hours at once? Or? Yeah. Oh, and for several hours, it wasn't near that long. Okay. We never, uh, Goldie would sleep a little bit and I'd shake him. I'd sleep a little bit for 24 days. We didn't hit the sack for 24 days, except when we unloaded our, what, a P-38, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the ship, that we had a boat on our ship. Right. It was 120, 138, I think, 128 feet. And uh, so we had to unload that and uh, when he did that, they had to take my gun away. So I went down below right away and grabbed my camera out of my ready box. And so I went up there and I took pictures of them when they shoved it off and when it landed. And I got all those on a tape. There's not another one in the world. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And the, the boat you're talking about, this is an LCT, which is a, a large landing craft. And it was sitting on the deck of your LST? Yeah, that okay. was a boat. And you had to tilt it sideways to slide it off into yeah. the water. Yeah, well, it was sitting straight until they were ready. Mm-hmm. And then they listed the ship to between 8 and 12, 11 degrees. And just as soon as that was at that part, they chopped it with an ax and down it went. Okay, and, and they had rope. to take your gun off because it would have gotten in the way? Yeah, they had to take our gun away. Yeah, because it would have... It was right in the w- line there, so, uh, right. yeah, we, uh, okay. And uh, did you, while you were out there off Okinawa, would you reload or resupply? I mean, would, you, would you what? Well, when you were off Okinawa, were you uh, unloading other supplies or getting resupplied? No, no, we were, no, no. no. You're, you're we just were not, well, at times we loaded uh, because the Marines were in there, mm-hmm. and they, when, when they go out with a car, or something. They have to be replenished with gasoline. They have to have more food. They got to have more bullets. And we had to bring from one to another. Bring okay. one to another. And do All right. That. Okay. So you were taking, that's your microphone down there. Um, 
So basically, so you were you were you getting supplies from uh, transport ships and loading them onto the LST? Yes, we uh, well we uh, we had to a lot of these smaller boats or ships. We had to uh, uh, give them fuel. So okay. They came to our ship to buy to get fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget we had three hundred thousand gallons of fuel oil, and we had a lot of those ships couldn't go across the ocean, so they come up to us and would mm -hmm. load them up with a, with oil, fuel right. oil. Or, okay. Now, did your ship ever uh, take any battle damage? Uh, well, when we went back into uh, uh, Ulysses, yeah, well, we went back into Ulysses after 20 days. They told us that we could run the engine as slow as possible, and we lost the uh, propeller. So when we got to Ulysses, they looked at it and said, this thing isn't worth saving. <laughs> <laughs> they said, it isn't worth saving. You might as well. And so then they looked at it, and finally they said, uh, well, I don't know. We'll see once what they got in the other islands. So they called, and yes, they had enough panels, three-eighths inch panels. The whole ship is three-eighths. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, yeah, we got three-eighths inch panels, and they had enough of them so we could go down there and another slow drive. We only had, we could only go at, at the slowest speed with one propeller. Okay. And then we got down there, and they fixed it up. How long were we there? About a week or two, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, about a week or two, and they repaired our whole ship, okay. our whole ship, and then we had to go back again, and uh, so then we went to, uh, I forget the name of the town, we had to go down and pick up a bunch of P-38 supplies. P-38s are uh, those planes will keep coming over bombing Tokyo. Well, they could stay way out and come in. When they got as far as Aishima, then they uh, they had to have company to, to support them all the way down there. Those P-38s would pick them up, and they would go down there so those big planes they okay. could protect okay. them. Well, the P-38s were fighter planes. Fighter they planes. were escorts for the B-29s yeah, yeah. that were yeah. flying uh, up, up pursuit. in Japan. Pursuit uh, P-38, yeah. yeah. Okay, but you have, so you're bringing supplies for the aircraft and, and so forth. Okay, so by this time, uh, now was there there's still fighting going on on Okinawa by this time? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're still on. And, and shortly uh, before we got there, Ernie Pyle got killed. Mm -hmm. That was a, about a week before we got there, I think, a couple right. days later. Yeah. Right. And that was on Ieshima, which is the little island just north of Okinawa. That, that's uh, Ieshima. Yeah. That's that little island mm -hmm. on the farther south end. Farther south end. Okay, south end. And right. uh, that's it, it. Couldn't take the big ones, so it, it had to have a pursuit to go pick it up when they come, and mm -hmm. they they follow them in. Right. And if any planes come in, they're after them. Okay. All right. Now, at that time, were there still kamikazes coming out? I mean, did the kamikazes keep coming the whole time you were at Okinawa? All the time. <laughs> yeah. They never quit. They had the suicide boats, too. They had to watch for them. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now, did they have those at Okinawa? Yeah. Okay. And can you describe what one of those looked like or how big it was? No, it wasn't very big. Just, I'm sure it's that Is stuff on there to blow us, blow a hole in your ship or something. But they were suicide we're, people. Okay. Now, because the Japanese had some things that were pretty much human torpedoes, just little a manned torpedo or explosive, but were these like small boats that just were full of explosives or? Uh, we didn't, I haven't remember seeing those. Okay. We, everything we shot at was in the air. Okay. We didn't shoot anything that was on the ground. Okay. Not that I know of. Uh, no. Okay. no. I'll tell you a little story if you don't care. Go right ahead. It don't amount to nothing, but <laughs> uh, yeah. me and a friend of mine, we went in the Navy together. All the time we got up to Great Lakes, uh, 
I had laryngitis or something. <laughs> so uh, we got separated there. And uh, he said that we've refueled ships going out. Well, Sid, I've got a picture of it that Sid took. We was refueling this LCS-11. And uh, after we got out, uh, that friend of mine said he's on LCS-11. I said, well, I got a picture of that. And we was, run, we was filling him with fuel running along there. And I didn't know he was on that. And he didn't know I was. But Sid had took a picture, and I had that LCS-11 mm -hmm. filling him with fuel. Very good. Uh, you know, it just. Okay. Uh, so uh, at what point, now do things quiet down a little bit for you? Uh, I, I guess eventually, well, eventually you, uh, or did it take until the war? So. I guess the, the fighting on Okinawa goes on mostly in April and in May, uh, and the Japanese don't surrender until August. No. So what are you doing during the last couple of months of the war? We went back to Okinawa. We went back to uh, Aishima again. Mm -hmm. And when we went back, that's when they dropped the big bomb, Okay. the second one. And when you heard about the bombs being dropped, did you know what that meant? <clears throat> well, I didn't. Not really. If we were smiling all over. <laughs> yeah. But then a couple of days later, the Japanese surrendered. Yeah. All right. And when they come over the radio <clears throat> that the Japanese had surrendered, my favorite admiral, Halsey, he said, uh, they say the Japanese are friendly now. If you see one, shoot him down in a friendly fashion. <laughs> well, he was my favorite admiral. <laughs> now, were there... Um, any more attacks after the surrender? We were very, very fortunate because uh, what's his name from uh, uh, the the big shot? Uh, uh, MacArthur? Uh, huh? The American uh, big shot or the Japanese big shot? Uh, in the my army. Who was the head of the army? Well, well it was MacArthur. Huh? There MacArthur. was General MacArthur. Yeah. In fact, uh, he wanted to go with the army, and the first papers we had were, I had top secret, first pa papers we had was uh, he wanted to go in to be a big shot. And he, I don't think he was going in, but he sent his armies in, mm. yeah. And so uh, uh, we were almost in that one, if we did, we would have been dead. Okay. So, so did you have charts for the actual invasion of Japan? Yeah. Okay. So you kind of knew where your ship was supposed to go. I knew exactly where our ships. Yeah. And uh, nobody else knew it except the skipper. Mm -hmm. Okay. But instead, but you do go to Japan. Well, I seen the Japanese surrender to MacArthur on the Big Mo. Mm -hmm. And how did you manage to? Was, was did your ship go there? Our ship was uh, tied up, all, you know, several tied up, and then you gangplank over mm -hmm. from one to the other. Mm -hmm. And I gangplanked over, and I stood there and watched them two Japanese come down there and surrender to MacArthur. Mm -hmm. So were you on the Missouri or just on another ship watching it? No, I was on the Missouri. Okay. Our ship was tied back, but like I said, I gangplanked over okay. to that. All right. So, did you have orders to do that, or no, did you just did it yourself? Just, just got to go. Nobody stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Uh, how close do you think you were to where they were signing things? Oh, 40, 50 feet. Okay. Yeah, I could see him signing. So, so, so were there a group of sailors standing at attention there, and you just joined them, or? You just yeah, all I don't just kept standing around. Just how it happened. I just remember them coming down there and surrendering to MacArthur. Okay, uh, and what did it look like in, in, in Tokyo Bay at that point? What could, if you're on a ship, what do you see when you look around? When the Japanese surrendered, there was nothing there to show. I mean, nobody bothered. To, I don't. Uh, so I you don't know. One see. one couple, a couple of guys went in and tore some of the stuff out of the school stuff. But we were told not to monkey with that at all. Okay. That's, that's the only thing I heard of. 
uh, I've heard. Well, I was thinking just about um, seeing all the ships in the bay. I think there were some. Was there anything on the on the shoreline? That, uh, that well, the mountains there? were right behind us. Mm -hmm. I remember what was on the shoreline. There was a pile of guns bigger than this building. Mm -hmm. They made them turn them all their guns in. There's a pile of them. At I wasn't there for that. Okay. Uh, had they let you go home because Pardon me? had they let you go home or were you just on uh, as soon as the uh, the first group went out I had enough points to go home okay so I went out right away with the first group all right well but, there in Tokyo you give me your camera huh you give me your camera there and uh, I went took some pictures yeah, really. this one Japanese bus was a coal fard thing mm -hmm. The barrel sitting on the back of it with coal, and that's what fired it. Mm -hmm. And I took a picture of it, but I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it didn't turn out or something. Oh, well, it turned out. It's in there probably somewhere. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. got so many. Yeah, I know you do. Okay. So you did get to Japan, at least briefly, but they sent you home pretty quickly after that. Well, I was one of the first ones to go home. Right. Okay. But you stay in the Navy for a while. I had to. Okay. They wouldn't turn my news. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, uh, after Sid leaves, then, uh, so you were you based in Japan for a while, or? Well, they put me on uh, on another LST. We give the one we had to Japan. Okay. <laughs> and we're boy, generous. We had to clean it up good to give it to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then when you got on the new LST. Uh, where did you go, or what did you do? Oh, we just went to different islands around. <coughs> so you were just delivering supplies and going back yeah. and forth, that kind of thing? Well, we hauled some uh, Japanese back home, okay. picked them up at the islands. and. Okay. I was gone Japanese by that time. All right. Uh, so took them back and kicked them off. Okay. <laughs> so, so what impression did you have of these Japanese soldiers you were picking up? <coughs> I don't know. Just glad it was over. Okay, but you um, did it. Did they start to look like people to you at that point, rather than the enemy? Or oh yeah, they're just people, and they didn't have no guns or nothing. Or mm -hmm. And how did they behave on the ship? Oh, they had to behave. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and about how long do you think you spent doing that? How long did you stay out in the Pacific? Gee, I don't know. Because I think you told me you got discharged in 47. Yeah. So do you think you spent most of 1946 going back and forth? Back in the and forth on different ships. And okay. Now, did you ever get back, all the way back to the U.S., or did you just stay out in the Pacific? Stayed out in the Pacific. Okay. Now, well, did you... The, I got to come back on a 30-day leave, I guess. Then I had to report... Oh. No G U and and they asked me said uh, <coughs> well uh, where do you want to go <laughs> and I said well if I have to go back out I'm gonna go to the Atlantic because I've been all over the Pacific well, you know where they sent me right back to the Pacific where I was of course <laughs> <laughs> all right now when you had your leave uh, how did you get back home did they just on on boats or or did they fly you? I took a train. <coughs> no, but I mean to get back to the United States. Or, or on the troop ship. Okay. Yeah. So how do now did the time spent on the troop ship count against your leave, or did the leave start when you landed? No, oh, that wasn't part of the leave. Okay. Anyway. Okay, good. I was still on duty. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and then, so did you serve out the rest of your time in the Navy on an LST in the Pacific, or did you have any different job? Well, I went on a LSM. You went on an LSM? Yeah. <laughs> Quite a bit smaller. <laughs> <laughs> Off of Guam, we went out on <laughs> weather station. Okay. We sat out there for 30 days, and they just send up their balloons, the air, and the <laughs> So when you're sitting out there on a weather station, how do you spend your time? With nothing to do. Yeah. Well, uh, the officers, they were shooting sharks most of the time, and we was <laughs> feasting for them. Okay. Uh, now, 
Over the course of your time on these different ships, did you ever go through a typhoon? Were you ever in a really bad storm? We went through one when we, yeah. when we're still together. Mm -hmm. We went through with the worst one that they've had in years. And uh, some people say it's about 40 foot waves, the other ones 60 foot waves, some 75, some 100. Mm -hmm. that we <laughs> it's just big swells, yep. you know, uh, not waves. They've one, one fellow was, I forget who it was, he was on the ship's wheel. And uh, when you, when the ship goes up, it picks you up and then you got about that much space where it, cut, it catches up with you again. So, so he got picked up, and then it was thrown, and he was thrown against the ship at the door of the ship of the wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. He just picked up, and there he's all. <laughs> so that you that it picks you up, throws you right up in the air, and then you land somewhere always. Okay. You know them LSDs are just as flat bottom as this mm -hmm. floor here, so we went in. Well, he'd get up on top of them big swells, then down she'd go. Just All right. Now, in the middle of that, did you think you were going to sink? Or did you? Well, just... it wouldn't have surprised me not. Because <laughs> we'd taken a little <clears throat> water time. We had a crack on. And when it was, we'd <sighs> take on a little water. Yeah. But they said them LSTs, you could cut them in half, and both halves would float. If you had all your compartments mm -hmm. tied watertight. So. Okay. But you did get through it, so you're still here. Yeah. Yeah? All right. Uh, now, when you think back on uh, over the time that you spent in the Navy, are there other particular events or memories that stand out for you that you haven't <coughs> talked about yet? <coughs> I can still see that <coughs> Jap plane coming in at us, right yeah. at us. We just, I was just over the water, just almost touching the wa water, and uh, come down there, and uh, I had my finger on trigger before that. I had pulled it. All of a sudden, it was it's coming close? Goldie picked up the thing, put it on there, and poo. Goldie said, "I could see the whites of his eyes." Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, but, yeah. How he missed us, the good <laughs> Lord had to just. Mm -hmm. For me and Sid, we worked. Yeah. We tried to work as one person. Mm -hmm. Two people don't work, so quite often. Okay. But now, we tried as much as possible to one person, because when he puts his thing on there, if he had missed that, we'd be dead. Mm -hmm. But he missed. He hit every time. Right. He was a farmer. He could pick up stuff and boom, it was right okay. there. Now, that, were, the, were that, you the only two men on that gun crew? Huh? Were you the only two men on that gun? We're the only two men on that gun. Okay. On that gun, yeah. We had a lot of other guns. Yeah, there, there are other guns. In yeah. the, oh, we had some crew. 40s. Oh, we yeah. had uh, one, two single 40s on the bow door. Mm -hmm. and then we had one uh, twin Twins on the bow. Mm -hmm. And we had two singles and two 40s in the back. Right. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, once you uh, got, you served out your enlistment and they finally let you go home, uh, did you just go back home to Illinois and start farming or did you do something else? Well, I tried about everything, but, but we did uh, uh, come home and my wife had saved up enough money to, we made a down payment on some land and of course <laughs> I'd done a lot of other things. <laughs> okay, so when did you get married? In 44. Okay, I think. all right. So right after I went in the Navy. You're in the Navy, but you hadn't yeah. left for overseas yet, obviously. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, My pay was $4, $10 a month. $6 was taken out for pay, uh, insurance. I had to pay my own insurance. Mm -hmm. So I had $4 a month was my pay. Now, All the time I was in there. Now, were you having any money sent home? I mean, did, um, you, did your yeah. wife get money? My my pay was uh, forty-eight dollars a month, mm -hmm. which went to my wife. Right. Okay. I had uh, two children home. We had built a house, and uh, so 
uh, taking twenty-five dollars off of fifty, you got twenty-five left, and then you got these stuff that you got to get for the kids and all. Uh, and uh, when they got all through, she had about one penny left to buy groceries. <laughs> And uh, we had a meat market and a grocery store, and we sold that, and we put the money in the bank, and she could draw from that. So, but we didn't have enough money. We had one penny left to make a buy groceries. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> and we had four dollars for for my pay. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, when you're on a navy ship, you don't need a lot of money most of the time. You don't need much. Yeah. No. No. Candy candy bars were a nickel. Uh, cigarettes were ten cents. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, when you went to any of these islands, did you ever see any of the native population? Did you oh, see yeah. Yeah. We oh, yeah. Some of them. yeah when we, I got, uh, I, well, every time I went to one of those islands, I bought a cane. I got a whole rack full <laughs> of canes. And they were always, most of them are very happy and mm -hmm. glad to see us. Okay. And then, did you see any of the civilians on Okinawa? No. What? Did you see any of the people on Okinawa? <sighs> I don't remember okay. seeing anyone. All right. No. Okay. Uh, now, I want to kind of to, to close things out a little bit. Um, if you think back to the time that you spent in the Navy, uh, how do you think that affected you, or maybe what did you learn from it? Oh, nothing worth mentioning, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No. You think you were the same guy when you came out that you were when you went in? Well, how do you know? Okay. All right. Well, I asked that question, and I never know what answer I will get. Yeah. All right. But I tell you, you, got, you guys have a great story, and, and, and Sid has recorded this stuff, <laughs> and he has it on video. We're actually doing, he's doing a, a presentation of it this afternoon, which people watching this won't see. But... Um, you know, you've done a lot of work to kind of preserve a lot of what you've done, which is wonderful. And I'd just like to thank both of you for coming in and sharing your story today. Well, I could tell you a little story there on Okinawa. Okay, then do that before hear. we turn things off. Yes. Well, two of our guys on the ship, uh, one of them, he was, hell, he, was, he could take 100 pounds just, you know. And, but he wasn't, them two guys wasn't seeing enough action on that LST. So they decided they'd go ashore with the Marines, and they did. Mm -hmm. They <laughs> went ashore with them, yeah. and after they got over there, they decided that more action than they needed. So they shot each other in the foot to get back mm -hmm. on the hospital ship, and I don't know whatever happened to them. I've never heard any more, but well, yeah, Thomas they both made, had a shot in the same place, and huh? they wanted to go in there. But when they got there, halfway down there, what's the uh, what's the the uh, password? <laughs> Neither one of them knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so they wanted to come back, and they were shoved in a brig. They put them in a brig for I don't know how long. And <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, well, I think that takes care of it here. So thank okay. you both very much.